We'll meet tomorrow. Get the cognac ready. When cosmonaut Vladislav Volkov sent this radio message toward Earth, he could not have known that he would die the next day. After the recovery teams arrived at the landing capsule as planned, they found inside not three exuberantly celebrating national heroes, but the lifeless bodies of their comrades, with whom they had exchanged stories just a few hours earlier. But what led to this mysterious catastrophe? What do we know about this terrible disaster? What information is available to us? And what is being kept from us? Let's examine the harrowing story of Soyuz 11 together and search for answers. Triumph and Tragedy In 1971, the Soviet Union was falling behind. The so-called Sputnik shock of 1957 was already 14 years in the past. At that time, the Soviets had succeeded in sending an artificial satellite into orbit for the first time with Sputnik 1 and shaking the superior self-perception of the Americans to its foundations. In 1961, the next triumphant blow followed. Soviet cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin became the first human to leave our blue home planet. But 10 years later, the tide had turned. Not only had the Americans managed to put two men, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin, on a foreign celestial body, no, between the years 1969 and 1972, one successful moon landing chased the other. At that time, the Soviets were secretly working on their own lunar program. But since the N-1 launch vehicle only produced false starts, and the designers could not cope with the situation after the death of Sergei Karolov. The final end of all lunar ambitions followed in 1974. In view of all these setbacks, however, we must not forget one thing. In another aspect, Russian spaceflight was ahead. Thus, the U.S. Air Force began already in the early 60s to work out its plans for the program Manned Orbiting Laboratory. Within the framework of this program, a spy station was to be placed in Earth orbit. When the Soviets got wind of the MOL plans, they in turn responded with the so-called ALMAS program. The costly moon landings and the turmoil of the Vietnam War eventually led the American project to be cancelled without results. The Soviets, on the other hand, sensed their chance to do important pioneering work in an unoccupied field, which is why they continued to pursue their goals undeterred. The ALMAS program eventually became the Soyuz program which included both civil and military space stations. On April 19, 1971, the time had come. Salyut-1 was the first space station in history to reach Earth orbit, two years before the Americans followed suit with Skylab. The nearly 20-ton Salyut-1 carried several telescopes, a UV measuring instrument, a spectrometer, and an electrophotometer into orbit, completed by a top-secret radiometer. While it initially looked as if the program would be a roaring success, the first setback followed on April 23rd. The crew that had just set out into space aboard Soyuz 10 failed to master the unprecedented docking maneuver with the space station. Although the cosmonauts docked with the station as planned, they were unable to establish a pressure-tight secure connection between their spacecraft and Soyuz 1. As a result, the men had no choice but to abort the mission and return to Earth in resignation. Soyuz 11. As part of the subsequent problem search, the Earth experts had to rely on speculation. Since the docking device had been jettisoned before re-entry, they could only assume that this component was defective. What Soyuz 10 failed to do, Soyuz 11 was supposed to do better. And had everything gone as originally planned, Alexei Leonov, Pyotr Kolodin, and Valery Kubasov would have departed into space in a timely manner. But it was never to come to that. A few days before the launch, X-rays revealed dark spots on Kolodin's lungs. Since the dangerous infectious disease tuberculosis could not be ruled out as the cause, the replacement crew had to step in. When Viktor Pasiev, Georgi Zabrovsky, and Vladislav Volkov soon found themselves inside the Soyuz 11 spacecraft, the latter cosmonaut could look back on any practical space experience. Despite this, the inexperienced crew set off for Soyuz 1 at 6.55 local time on June 6, 1971, and a day later caused cries of jubilation on Earth. The docking maneuver succeeded on the first try, making Pasiev, Dabrowski, and Volkov the first cosmonauts in history to set foot on a space station. Subsequently, they succeeded in activating Soyuz 1 as desired and completing some experiments. However, doubts soon crept into the initial euphoria, as a number of complications arose. On one occasion, the life support system threatened to fail. Another time, 
the cables of an experiment burned out and smoke billowed out. Moreover, since the Soviets had their own way of dealing with failures, it was anything but easy for the crew to report the problems to the ground station. The background. For security purposes, the cosmonauts were supposed to use special code words in such cases. But since the radio operator on Earth had not been informed of this, he only understood the station. In the end, however, the test that had gone wrong was discontinued. The ventilation took care of the rest so that the men could continue working in a smoke-free environment. The Disaster Damaged cables weren't the only thing that brought worry lines to the Soyuz 11 crew's foreheads. As the men took to the treadmill to exercise their endurance, the entire station began to vibrate slightly. And yet all things considered, the crew stayed in Salyut 1 for 22 days, 10 hours, and 39 minutes. In this way, the three cosmonauts were able to secure two records at once. Not only did they become the first humans to enter a space station in space, but they also secured the title for the longest stay in space. To put this in perspective, the Apollo 17 crew, which carried out the last and longest mission of the Apollo program, spent only 12 days away from Earth. With the knowledge which terrible misfortune should occur thereafter, the last radio messages from Soyuz 11 seem all the more tragic. For example, in one of the last calls, the crew stated, We are longing for Earth, and received a reply from the ground station, We are waiting for you. On the 50th anniversary of the disaster, Russian space agency Roskomos published the crew's last message in 2021. This was the last message Vladislav Volkoy transmitted a few hours before his death. We will meet tomorrow. Get the cognac ready. Of course, at the time, no one could have guessed that the hoped-for reunion would give way to a mysterious sadness. After all, everything went according to plan. When the return module separated from the orbital module at 2247, there was no cause for concern. But then the first signs appeared that something was wrong at 2249. The crew should have reported the successful separation of the orbital module and the opening of the parachute, but the ground station received no message. Prior to their return, the crew had been instructed to remain in the capsule after landing and wait for the recovery crew and medical personnel. So after the landing capsule had touched down on the Kazakh steppe at 11.16 p.m., the recovery crew arrived at the landing site on schedule and couldn't believe their eyes. Instead of looking at the beaming face of the space travelers, they saw only three lifeless bodies. When the capsule returned to Earth, Dabrowski, Volkoy, and Pasiev had already been dead for 25 minutes. The search for the cause. The recovery team immediately tried to resuscitate the men, but all efforts were in vain. But what had happened? What led the three cosmonauts becoming the first and so far only people to die in space? Well, a defective pressure equalization valve was to be identified as the cause of the catastrophe in the aftermath. This had already come loose during the separation of the orbital and the return module, and that at an altitude of 168 kilometers. This maneuver was originally intended for air supply when the capsule was near the ground. But because the valve detached far too early, the men's vital breathing air escaped into space. The fact that the crew did not send a distress call afterwards was probably due to the fact that in their desperate death throes, they tried to find the leak and switched off the radios to do so. It is conceivable that this happened because the men wanted to locate the leak acoustically. In any case, the open seatbelts of Dabrowski's seat provided an indication of this. But it is possible that the cosmonauts were no longer conscious at this point. It is certain that the men died within a very short time. The crew's medical data, which was steadily recorded, showed that all three members suffered cardiac and respiratory arrest after about 110 seconds. The fact that the capsule arrived on Earth unharmed was again due to the fact that the landing was completely automated. The bodies of the space travelers were transferred to Moscow on the day of the accident and laid out in the House of Unions. After cremation, a funeral with full state honors took place on July 3, 1971. The urns were later interred at the Kremlin Wall. No Cowards From today's point of view, a fundamental question arises. Why did the crew of Soyuz 11 not wear spacesuits? Even more, why were there not even oxygen masks on board the landing capsule at that time? Well, the Soviet designer and rocket pioneer Vasily Mishin justified the decision not to wear the spacesuits as follows. I don't want cowards on board my spacecraft. 
Beyond this questionable justification, however, this decision still held a practical benefit. Cosmonauts not wearing spacesuits simply take up less space. To the outside world, however, the decision was justified primarily by the great safety of the Soviet spacecraft. In contrast to the Americans, there would simply be no need for gas-tight protective suits. After the accident, the question of guilt was raised. Could the crew have averted the catastrophe on their own? Was the cause more to do with inadequate training than with the faulty component? The spacesuit denier mission emphasized that closing the valve had been practiced on Earth, but he concealed the fact that this scenario had only been simulated for the landing of the spacecraft on water in training, which for the men would have had several minutes. And even if the cosmonauts had found the leak immediately, they would have had only 25 seconds to pass out. Ultimately, the Soyuz 11 accident was to have some profound consequences. The Soviets initially halted their manned spaceflight completely. The Soyuz 1 space station was left to its own devices and burned up on October 11, 1971, irretrievably losing numerous scientific results. The Soviet crews that later left for space wore newly developed spacesuits, and the associated life support system was intended to refill the cabin with air in the event of an emergency. Thanks so much for watching. What's going through your mind in light of the tragic Soyuz 11 mission? Could the disaster have been prevented? Feel free to hit the like and subscribe buttons and write your thoughts in the comments. And with that, we say ciao and see you next time.